So in this video, I share with you this river bed. At the moment, you notice that because of the droughts and stuff that was happening in the earlier months, that the water is very low. But even though it's low, I hope that when you looked at the video, that you were not taken up with just noticing the rocks in the riverbank or the vegetation on the sides of the banks of the riverbank, but that you actually notice the nice, clean, clear water as it flows down the riverbank. As we think of it, we think of the importance of of the river because we're surrounded by many oceans but it's a river that gives us that fresh water for drinking. So as I watch this little video clip from Mrs. Dawkins my assistant manager for the Blessed Soup Kitchen back down there in Jamaica. This river actually runs next to her farm out there in Jamaica. But as she sent it and I was watching it, I was I I it came to mind uh, when years ago I taught Dawn of Civilization where we took a good look at the River Nile and how it was important um, in the early civilizations. So people survived in that time when they stopped moving around as nomads. When they decided to settle down, it was right there next to the river bank, to the River Nile. Um, and so the, the river was responsible for providing a source of water for them, good fresh water, irrigation for their farmland. Remember, they weren't farming before, but when they decided to settle and to domesticate animals and to create their sources, resources for to stay stable in one place, right? Then they also had to irrigate the land for farming. And from the farming, they were able to trade with other people through the water transportation. So it was right there in, by the River Nile. It was right there that boats were created to move farm goods from the top of the Nile down to the bottom of the Nile or to, to other areas where they did a lot of trading. And so many of the earlier civilization, they thrived because of the availability of rivers um, and such. And these were the Mesopotamian cultures who had the Euphrates River and Tigris River. Egyptians, they had the River Nile. Indians with the Indus River and Chinese with the Huan River and the Yangtze river. So you have so, so many rivers around the world because that's what gives us our fresh water. And the rivers usually flow to a larger water source, source such as a lake or sea or the ocean. And we remember that in, 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 in Egypt, the Nile six months it would the river would flood and six months it would be okay right so when it flooded what happened is that they it deposited this rich soil they call it silt was deposited and it was a good good thing for farming so six months it would overflow its banks and then after that, the farmers would plant their foods and the crops would be rich. And um, again, people used the Nile. First, they lived 
they started living along the Nile. And so you can imagine that the richer people were at the forefront because they had access to the water, while the poorer people and the peasants were living far back. Um, they were able to eat fruits from the fruit trees along the river, and they were able to fish, to fish in the river and, 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 and have that for food. Um, Again, the Nile is also responsible for the health of the Egyptians and their ability to survive. So again, today, rivers are used for the same qualities as well as they are now using the rivers. The technology is a big thing today, right? So now with technology, they are trying to create, they use it to create hydroelectric power sources. So just looking at this little video, brought back those memories when I taught these students about, you know, life along the Nile River. Um, this river might look a little skimpy because people do not really clean out the rivers as much in Jamaica. Like, they, they, they don't really focus on it as much as in developed countries. When I look at, like, even the Hudson River right here in in America, even when I look at the Connecticut River, wide, wide um, banks, very wide banks, you know, deeper than our little rivers in Jamaica. They, they, these people care about their water source. And so, you know, we, we, we do get a good source of water, right? Um, but I just looked at that little river and I remember the days when I walked across the river, um, the riverbed uh, when the water wasn't so high and it, it the water is so so cool and we used to go there too we didn't wash them but we'd bring the clothes to so rinse them there <laughs> and then we, with my sister and I would swing the buckets back home and put the clothes on the line so enjoy guys enjoy just a little bit of um just a little walk down memory lane because she sent me this video and um, it just took me right back to the days when I taught these lessons and we tried to build and connect and um, help the kids to understand the use of the river and to remind them that a lot of things we use today started right there by that river Nile. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel as yet, please subscribe, like a video or two, share a video or two or more, and leave a comment. Thank you and good night.